Here's a really cool sculpture I just built. It's made of mirrored acrylic plastic, so it can be hard to see what's the sculpture and what's the reflection. But it's about seven inches in diameter, and I call it pentagrams, because it has these 12 woven stars on the outside. I like how they seem to float with their corners near their neighbors, but not quite touching. What holds it together and keeps it rigid are the wiggly bits in the center that connect each star to five others in the other hemisphere. I'll show you how I made it, but first, you should understand it in two different ways. I want you to see the forest and the trees. One way to see it is just as 30 flat pieces. Each piece is the same shape. It's like a character from an alien alphabet. Each touches four others at the four corners. The Ys at the top and bottom are carefully designed to weave through each other to make a pentagram, and the Ss in the middle are designed to weave around each other in the interior without touching. The second way to see it is not the parts, but the whole organization. The 30 trees are carefully organized into a forest of 12 stars. They're like the 12 faces of a dodecahedron, except adjacent pentagons in a dodecahedron touch each other, while here the neighboring pentagrams don't connect directly. It may be easier to understand if I hide the center and show only the pentagrams. Each is made from one end of five different flat pieces. They join at their tips with a bevel that connects two different planes. Then if I hide the pentagrams and show you just the inside parts, you can see how the S's wiggle around each other and make nice three-way vortices. It's all very symmetric. Putting it all together, it's sort of amazing that pieces which are completely flat can make this interlocked spherical form while only touching at their very outer tips. So after I designed this computer model, I wanted to make it physically real out of an elegant material. I laser cut the parts from a mirrored acrylic Laser cutting is very accurate, so I could be confident the parts would fit together as the mathematical model predicts. Oh, ignore that little pile on the left. They're for a different design I'll explain in some other video someday. In one piece, I etched my initials and the year, so I've signed the sculpture before I even made it. It's actually etched backwards into the back mirror side of the acrylic, so you can read it properly from the front. Then I did a test fit. I temporarily taped the pieces together to get a feel for the complexity. Here's one pentagram. You can see how the other ends of its five components will be part of five other stars on the other side. Now I've turned it over and started adding parts to these five stars. These five new parts are each part of two of these new stars. And continuing, here I've completed those five stars. There's still a blank spot in the center where another star goes, but it doesn't connect to these five. I should mention that it's quite tricky to get everything properly positioned. As I add each new piece, first I visualize where it goes, then I have to wiggle it all around the existing pieces to get one Y end through the middle and around the S parts that make the three-way vortices in the middle and then out the other side. And then the Ys need to be positioned so that the overs and unders make a star weave. Finally, I finish the test fit and I can see the parts are accurate and I'm going to like the final result. I should mention that it's very tricky and this took a lot longer to assemble than the video might suggest. So I really didn't want to take off the tape and disassemble it, but that's the next step. The 30 separate parts lock together amazingly well, but once a few wiggle loose, it all comes apart quickly. The actual sculpture uses glue joints, not scotch tape, to hold the parts together. So I used a disc sander to bevel the four tips of each piece to the proper dihedral angle. It's a pretty steep angle, so first I had to make this custom wood wedge to position the parts at the correct tilt. And I'm being careful to get just the right depth of cut each time. Now's the worst part. The acrylic is protected by a thin plastic film on the front and back so it doesn't get scratched when you're working on it. That has to be peeled off and getting these corners started is a task for sturdy fingernails. But finally, you can see how nice and shiny this mirror material is. The back surface is gray, which will be on the interior. The mirrored part goes on the outside. I beveled the back so that the parts join together with a 72 degree angle between them. Now I've taped it all together back again to get the parts in their position, and I've also numbered the piece of tape from 1 to 60, so I can glue them in order and I'll know which I have glued and which I haven't glued yet. I'm applying a solvent cement with a special syringe. The solvent dissolves the plastic and then evaporates. It leaves the two pieces welded together. On my first go-round, I'm just tacking the tips together. Then I can remove the tape and finish each of the 60 joints with another dose of the glue. Finally, after many hours, it's done. 
and I must say I think it looks really great. I'm very happy with the design and the physical result. I find there's a nice balance between the forest and the trees, between mathematics and art, between the intellectual ideas and the aesthetic experience. I enjoy the process of building sculpture, of working on the many mathematical and technical challenges. I love taking these designs which would otherwise just float around in my head and making them physical for others to enjoy. And if there's anyone out there who really loves this sculpture, it's for sale. See the comments below for more information. Pentagrams is a one-of-a-kind work. I don't repeat designs, so it may already be sold when you see this, but everyone can still enjoy this video, I hope, showing the process of its birth.